So I'll just pop him onto the third. No, three, not two. There we go. Okay. So, so my units will be um, in you know one of the th you know some of the three white places, uh, and the the yellows and the greens, um, and it looks like what, what you'll probably want to be doing for the first turn, first couple turns, um, <laughs> your main priority is going to be blocking me from moving up and being able to recruit other tribes. So you'll want to block me from being able to nail your settlements. Um, and as well, trying to, you know, if you can, you know, trying to put some pressure on one of my tribes in it, uh, with attacks. Um, so... So typically, the Massachusetts are, are the ones that, that you have an option, you know, you've got some more flexibility with because you've got more troops, right? So um, that's, the, that's the green. Yeah. So um, actually, it probably makes sense to, to work on them last then. So, so th um, actually, we can start with the yellow stripes then. I can give you a little advice there because the Rhode Island are the yellow stripes. And so they're the the uh, the four running north south between um, the Wampanoags and the Nargonsets, um, and uh, uh, things can get pretty bloody there. Uh, so, but basically, the only the only places I'll be bordering to start are uh, that I could attack are going to be uh, Wickford and uh, Portsmouth. Um, and if I move, I can also hit in Providence with my po uh, Um Um So typically, um, uh, it seems like the 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 two openings that that I've seen and you know make a. Uh, good deal of sense are either, you know, sticking a unit north in Providence, Providence, and then a unit south in Wickford, or, um, to, you know, defend the north and the south, or to, uh, stick a unit in, um, um, Portsmouth and Wickford. Uh, and then, so that, so if they're stuck in the south, then they'll be defending against the Wampanoag attack in the south with the white units. And then the count, you know, to defend in the north, you'd have to send some of your Massachusetts troops down to put no, um, pressure on the poke assets. Um. But I think where you've got your two troops right now isn't actually a, a that's a neutral space. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. And then. Uh, so Plymouth Colony is much harder to defend than the red one, um, cause I border what, two, three, two, three, yeah, I mean, I, I border three, four, five of those places to start, um, it's, uh, not uncommon to see, you know, uh, a player put a troop and one of the two leaders in Plymouth, um, to defend the fort, um, so I can't walk up in there and, and, you know, do some real damage to it easily, um, and then, um, um, Taunton, um, is often a popular spot, or, uh, Swainsa, I suppose, or Middleborough, basically any of the four, uh, uh um, so there's 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 basically five reasonable options, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's that's a reasonable spot to go. Yeah. Um because you want to do what you can to to just sit on a on a, a settlement so I can't um attack it easily. And yeah, and Middleborough is a good spot because you've got two spaces that you can also attempt to intercept. If I were to attack either Bridgewater or um Townsend. And then the question is with the leaders, where they want to go. Um, and Winslow gives you a bonus with um, interception. 
so I think it's like, I think he gives you like a, a minus two as opposed to a minus one or something like that. Uh, yeah, a plus two, right? Because, okay, five or higher, so plus two. Yeah. Yep, so that, that, that looks, that looks good. And then, um, oh, um, Connecticut, uh, you know, won't see any action right now, but they've got a lot of area to defend. Um, uh, one thing worth remembering from, uh, uh, that's not, not actually, I think it was in the errata. I don't know if you've seen the errata, but, but one thing to consider is that if I'm able to destroy a port space, so if I attack and destroy the settlement in the port space, it doesn't function as a port for you anymore. Um, so, so. Um, and depending on how ugly things get, you may want to be able to bring, you know, say Massachusetts troops in there. Um, so it may be worth defending a port. Um, in particular, New London is uh, a crucial spot. And then, um, um, so those those Narragansetts. So the the blue purpley ones um, will be the the first tribe that I'm able to bring in uh, so it's it's either worth uh, you know it's worth being in a position to to block me off um, and the you know so either either Norwich um, Saybrook or I'm not sure what middle one that is because you've got the the captain over but the yeah Middletown yeah um, Either of those three make a good deal of good deal of sense. Yeah. Yeah, that works. And then and then the question you got you know, you got some more interesting options to do with uh, Massachusetts Bay. Um, so you could play it very conservative and um, you know, just try to, to, to find uh, you know, spread your spread your forces out and, and find places to defend or you have the option to, and I, I think it's the the better option is actually to set up so that you'll be able to to mount a, a decent attack um, on the Poka sets, um, either turn one or turn two, depending how things go. Um, and so um, it seems like your your main option uh, to be able to mount that attack is to either try to come uh, from like the Boston area, so Melford, Boston, and Dedham. Or from Lancaster and Marlboro, um, and the the reason I'm listing multiples is because you can only put one in a spot, you know, one one company in a spot to start. Um, so you'll have to to uh, move through um, and pick up units as you go as you move south if you want to put pressure on them. Um, and uh, one other thing to remember in the early game is that you won't be able to utilize those those two and three connections. So there will be something of a divide. Um, actually, I think it, it might even be a complete divide. I'm not sure if you can get around it. Uh, between, uh, so like Sudbury um, would, would divide like the, the Boston North-South Corridor and the Lancaster Marlboro North-South Corridor. So, um, um, And then, uh, okay, so for my troops, so as the, the the Indians, I um, uh, I can you know stack in a space of stacking restrictions, uh, and I'll be able to utilize the two and three connections to start. So um, my Sankanets, uh, oh, is this going to be? Oh, it's one of those. There we go. Right. You know when it does the auto stack. Um, okay, so so I, if I put them where I've got them right now, I've got the advantage of having two different spots uh, without having to move too much. Um, and then I'll be sticking... Uh, and I'll be fine. Okay, so... Yeah! Uh, yeah, he, yeah. 
Um, the way it plays, actually, I find, um, depending on how the, the Indian die, die roll, you know, dice go early, um, uh, so historically, uh, the, the Brits are in a really, or the, the colonists are in a really ugly position uh, for the first, you know, until Church shows up. And actually, if the, the Native American die rolls don't go very well, they can be in a really ugly position for, you know, two, three, four turns of a game. I think I played this at WBC last year as the colonists in one game, and my opponent as the Native Americans didn't get a... a Like any any attack, you know, enough settlements because he needs to destroy two settlements to start bringing allied Indian, you know, uh, other Indian tribes, and he can get it until like turn four or five. But for whatever reason, the 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 Native Americans are able to turn it later on in the game very well. So um, so it's kind of inverted historically. Uh, it seems like the Brits, uh, the colonists, actually have the advantage early on, and the uh, the the Native Americans are the ones that tend to play catch up. But it's not every game, so we'll see. Um, okay, so it looks like I am set up, and let me just make sure with the, uh, oh right, I have to place the Mohawk Satchem somewhere. Uh, so I'll just put him there. Uh, oh good, and they, there's just one, yeah, okay. In a previous version, they had, a uh, uh, two stacked in each space for the Mohawks, and there's supposed to be one, so they fixed that. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go. Um, so what do we do? Okay, so there's no, uh, Church allied Indian role because uh, where we've preset him. Uh, no English reinforcements on the first turn. Um, I haven't destroyed any settlements, so there's no Indian diplomacy. Uh, Indian reinforcements on first turn, so it starts with Indian movement and combat. Okay, and uh, so I can move up to basically five different stacks uh, and place attack markers with up to five different stacks. So. So I think the the first option, a place, and then I'll just mark it with the battle marker. So uh, Philip Stack will be uh, attacking. Uh, actually, hang on. No, they'll be attacking. Sorry, which one is that? Uh, rather than dragging, um, Rehoboth, I think. Yeah, Rehoboth. Alright, and uh, you're not adjacent, so um, no interception attempt. Uh, it's possible. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't answer them until it's, the settlement is destroyed. Um, uh, Okay, uh, so then those Wampanoags in the south um, will be, I'll just sort of place it, the map's a little crowded, but uh, they'll be attacking, uh, I think that's Wickford, right to the north, uh, you don't have anybody else adjacent, so no interception, um, and then uh, up, uh, yeah, uh, the Sankonets will be attacking Portsmouth, and then, um, mm, Yeah, we'll do it. All right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this stack uh, to the southern space. I probably should have well, I could have set up here, but thinking a little further, so I can move one, and then we'll attack um, Townton. And here you do have the option to intercept if you would like to attempt with Winslow. So. Um, uh, so the interception roll would typically be a five or higher. Um, now it's and uh, then it's minus one uh, modifier on the die for the pip, so it's up to six. And then with the key leader, it's a plus two, so down to four or higher. So it's be a fifty fifty chance to to be able to intercept there. The advantage being, I mean, you'll probably take uh, you know some damage on the company that he's with, but you would be able to to make it really hard for me. In fact maybe even impossible for me uh, to uh, destroy that particular settlement this turn. Um. Okay. Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so it'll be a, a four through six. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so two, so two fails, so you just don't intercept. Uh, there's no other penalty. Um, okay, so start to resolve battles. Uh, and, all right. So the order kind of matters, because uh, there's a particular result on the, um, um, Yeah, there's a pretty good result in the event die that can like get you troops, for example. So you could, um, as a result of one battle, be able to that I have placed troops in another spot that I'm attacking. So I'll be attacking with I'll attack with with Philip stack first to the north. Uh, so it's each um, full strength is worth uh, uh, war band is worth two. So I've got six for three. Seven for Philip, he gives a plus one. Um, and then uh, the the settlement itself has an inherent defense of one when it's um, uh, not damaged. Uh, so right now it's seven to one. So, uh, oh, though I'm looking, actually, I haven't played with the, oh, uh, is that, I haven't played with the, the, the module, so I'm kind of figuring out as I go. I think the thing that says combat role is, is, what I want. The, the question is just how I roll the event die. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, yeah, that's a whole button. I got it. Okay, so so it'll be seven on one. Uh, and then, I guess, uh, green is, is the Native American result. Okay, so effect is spy... The colonial, so on the, the one chart, a three uh, does nothing. Uh, the Indians, a five does three. Um, you only have two steps, so that's enough to destroy it. And then spy uh, even, even affects the English. So if you had a leader in there, he would receive a spy, but you don't have a leader, so that doesn't affect you. Uh, so... Sure. So, so the first thing to look up um, on the the CRT, uh, you just match up the die value. Um, so you've got one strength point in that battle uh, as the colonials. So uh, three as one strength point uh, does no effect. Um, I've got seven plus uh, strength points. So rolling a five does uh, three three points of damage to you. Um, and then the effect is spy. And so we determine uh, who the spy affects by um, adding up the dice. Um, and it's, an, it's even. It's eight, so it's even. Um, and so even events would affect the English. Um, but the spy event would place a spy on an English leader in this case, um, if there were one in the space. But because there's not an English leader in the space, uh, there's nowhere to place the spy, so the event effectively doesn't happen. Uh, okay, so I'll place a raised settlement marker there, and then I don't think this does is automated for that. So, um, so I move up your provisions lost. That keeps track of the number of settlements that you've lost. It's relevant for uh, tie breaks in the winter turn. Um, you'll lo you'll lose troops in the winter turn equal to um, half the provisions lost you have rounded down. Um, I think it's rounded down. I'll double check. Um, and then also I gain a victory point for destroying a settlement. So those are each up to one. Um, and, okay. Um, yeah, and I, I have the option to advance because I raised the settlement, um, but I will not advance, so I'll just remove that. Or, no, I won't remove the battle marker. I'll just put, we'll put the battle markers in, like, the Cape Cod Bay. Uh, easier to draw them then. Um, and then for my second battle, um, I'll be attacking with the Pocassets into um, Townton. Um, and so here I've got, uh, got four, so two, two, uh, full strength attacking, uh, a settlement. So it's going to be four to one, uh, and I'll roll the, the result. Uh, okay. So, uh, a one to six. So, oh, oh, this event I have to factor in first. So it's a, so it's a seven. So it's odd. So it affects the native American player. Um, and so with panic, um, the, the affected player, so that's me, cannot use one of his, uh, war bands or, or companies, um, in the upcoming battle. Um, and it's your choice. 
Um, now the choice is equivalent. Uh, you would just take one of the two out, and they're each worth the same. Um, but either way, it reduces me from a four to a six. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, a four, a four to a two, because one of my two values goes out. Um, so looking it up on the the results table, I do one point of damage to you, and you do uh, uh, nothing to me with one. So with one point of damage, uh, the settlement isn't destroyed, it's just raided. So it, uh, as the, the marker notes in the bottom left-hand corner, it doesn't have any more, um, uh, any more strength points there, um, so, but it uh, uh, isn't destroyed yet. Um, so I don't get the VP, or the, and you don't get the provisions lost, etc. Um, okay. And then um, I'll tack with the Sanconets. Um, yeah, okay. So with the Sanconets, um, I'll tack in Portsmouth. So it's again, it's a 4 to 1. Okay. Uh, oh, this is what you wanted. So, um, so with this one, with Massacre, you'll be getting a, a troop uh, somewhere on the map that we resolved the, the battle before you place the troop. Okay. Um, so, so a two, you're a one again, still misses. Unfortunately, your, inf your inherent defenses aren't reacting terribly well. Uh, and then um, I do one point of damage to you uh, with a f uh, four on four strength points. So once again, that settlement is raided but not destroyed. Um, and now uh, you get to, to place um, one friendly uh, company in a uh, village or or in a settlement of your of your choice. Um, so if you go into the, the, I think you know it's got the the Massachusetts guy on there. I think that's yeah, it's got all your troops in there, and you can place one of them uh, somewhere on the map. So it seems like you know your two options are either, well, you know, um, any of the four would would make sense. Um, tactically, at least one one thing worth considering is taking the. Uh, a troop from Rhode Island and sticking them in the place I'm about to attack in the south um, uh, to, to even up the odds a little bit. Um, but otherwise, uh, um, you know, taking a Plymouth guy and trying to defend one of the, the, the like the spot I just attacked, or taking another Massachusetts guy aren't wouldn't be bad moves. Um, um, Uh, yep, 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 yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's probably your best move, yeah. All right. So, so then with that, and then we have to do that attack now, and I've got six, six to your five, because you've got two companies there, plus the, uh, uh, yeah, plus the settlement, um, Oh, sorry, and technically you would have the, the option to evade, except that um, uh, in order to be able to roll and evade, um, you would need a, a, a captain there, because um, your, your natural roll for an evade is a seven on a six-sided die. Um, so that's why I skipped over that. Um, okay, so six, six to five. Okay, and that's, that's pretty good for you. Okay, so so the massacre it's an it's odd, so it'll affect me, but we'll resolve that after. Uh, so you're a five, five with five. That's going to do two to me. Ouch! And um, with six, uh, a four does two to you. Um, I forget who takes takes them first. I think the attacker does. So I'll I'll take mine and I'll flip two of my war bands. Um, Now, there's not quite as much of a decision for me as there is for, for you, because when my troops get eliminated, they're gone forever, uh, with the exception of Massacre. Um, your troops, on the other hand, um, uh, you know, you can get back during 
reinforcements. So it's worth considering in some contexts whether you want to just take a full hit on a unit and get it back the next turn, um, or you know flip them. Now, because you're you're not near, uh, you know, you've still got plenty of troops left in in the reserve that are still going to get reinforced. Probably makes sense to flip both of them. But and you also have the option if you don't want to flip flip them of um, well, technically you could raise the settlement. But that wouldn't be a good idea. But you can raid the settlement. Uh, so you could take a step off of, of Wickford um, and then take another step off of one of the other two troops and leave them at full strength. So you've got some different options there. Depends on whether you want to make your stand at Wickford um, or or not. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. No, that 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 one makes sense, but yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, and I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So so now we go to uh, to your turn. So we've got English movement and then English combat. Um. So it looks like, you know. Your your two different options are either spread out on the defense if um, you so choose, or um, you know to try to put some pressure on one of my tribes. In particular, the Pocassets. The the Greens are the probably the most vulnerable. Um, uh, uh, so so one option is to start sending your uh, your Massachusetts troops down uh, south. Uh, to to attack and maybe even um, you know bring some of your Plymouth troops there. Um, yeah. Uh. Yes. Uh, that's uh, that's my space. So you'll have to stay in Bridgewater and then place a battle marker into that tribe because it's got inherent defense there. So you'll have to to attack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, not yet. Um, only after church. So, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did we, we had a, that last battle had a massacre, right? Let me, hang on, let me scroll up. Uh, yeah, right, I didn't place the, I get, um, I got to place one troop. Well, um, yeah, I'll just do one, because it kind of makes, you know, it might have affected your moves, um, and it might have affected my placement, so I'll just toss one that wouldn't have made a difference. I'll just put a, a yellow guy with the rest of my yellow guys. Sorry about that. Okay. That'll make a difference. Okay, so now um, you get to choose in which order we resolve the battles. Okay. 
so you've got I think you've got three there because you've got a full strength under it and then uh, uh, the reduced guy and then I th I should have two yeah I've got two reduced and a full strength plus the uh, uh, the space that I'm on is is mine so you've got three attacking and I've got four or five defending. Oh, uh, doubles um, means automatically no battle, so nothing happens. Yeah, I don't think it has one. Most of mine don't. So yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, so you've got under the captain. I think you've just got one there. So um, so it'll be two on one. Okay. Uh, so two is nothing. Um, uh, six six with one is one. So you'll have to flip, and you get a you receive a spy. Um, let me see if I can find where those are located. Uh, yeah, that'll yeah. So uh, that's going to reduce your. Uh, oh, actually, it might be. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So I'll drag one of my spies and put it on you. Um, so, uh, so that'll stay on your leader um, until uh, uh, doubles are rolled until I use it. Um, so it'll, it'll serve as a minus one in combat and a minus one for movement, and I can use it to reroll one die in combat um, th that that stack is involved in. Yeah. Well, there's there's worse guys that can be on B, um, and then you've got a yeah that last battle, and that last one's a four on one. You got two guys there. Okay, that's better for you. All right, so a five with four is two, so that's going to destroy the settlement. Um, or uh, reinforcements actually it shifts you up a column. It's even, so it'll so it moves you to five. Still only does two, and that's all you need. Uh, three with one is a whiff, so um, you can take a. Or I'll just do it. Uh, I'll take a raided village or a raised village marker and just stick it right there. You have the option to advance if you'd like, and I'll move up the victory point track. So you're up to one VP, and I'm up to one provisions lost. Oops. I'll put that there. That there. Uh, oh, um, well, the reinforcements moves you up. Uh, uh, it's a column shift, a positive column shift for overt effects, and it uh, didn't make a difference in the context. Uh, um, okay, so so that's all of your movements. Uh, there's no winner attrition. Nobody's auto victory, so we just advance the turn marker. Okay, so that moves to there. Uh, let me just that musket. I don't think I'll be able to place it. Um, so those muskets, I would be able to, as the Indians, place them on a spot uh, if I've got a river connection. So any spot that's got like a blue circle or a port. Unfortunately, I don't have either of those at the moment, so I won't be able to place that musket. Uh, so I'll be. It just gets bumped back to the next turn. Um, so I could place two next turn if I get it. So uh, no church roll because we preset him. Uh, English reinforcements. So. It's a two one one one. So Massachusetts gets two, and everybody else gets one troop. And I believe reinforcements. Uh, so for you, they have to be placed in any settlement from that that uh, uh, colony, or with a company from the same colony. Uh, so even if it's not in the same settlement. Uh, yes.
on you mean on the the rest of them? Oh, the the spots on the board. You mean? Okay. So I get um, one yellow and one green for the moment uh, because, uh, well, first I'd have the option for diplomacy, but I've only raised one settlement and I need two. Uh, so that's not going to work. Okay, so put him there. Um, right, well. That's a... Uh, See, the, the question is whether I want to get a really strong stack with green to attack Townsend or whether I want to spread it out on the, on the defense. I think I'll do it. Well, <sighs> if I do it, that, that. No, you know what? These guys are going to be dead in two turns anyway. Well, th three turns anyway, so I as well get what I can out of them. Um, okay. So that's all that. And so start with Indian movement. Um, so I'll, since um, I'll just run through it a little more quickly this time. Uh, so we'll start with the the greens will be moving into Townsend. So you have the option to uh, attempt to intercept again. Winslow. Yep, so four through six. Two. Oh, he just does not want to move today. All right, so, so he's there. Um... Philip's going to attack Portsmouth. Uh, you don't have anybody adjacent, so no interceptions. Um, my... All right, that's... Uh, I can move up to six. So one, four, five. Oh, the four that only gives me a two-thirds chance. Uh, six. Um... Yeah, but I've already got tech. Okay. So I'll be moving uh, two of my units and the Sachem to over Martha's Vineyard. So it costs uh, two to move to uh, uh, this first space, and then three more to move. Here is five, and then uh, it's a one connection once Mon Edgar Town. So that's six. And uh, you wouldn't have the option to, to intercept because that's uh, a friendly space for me that I moved through adjacent to you. Um, so that's three. And then four is, let's just keep slugging it out in the south, I guess. Uh, you only have the, you didn't place your reinforcement there, right? You've just got the, yeah, you've just got the two. Um, three on four. <sighs> yeah. Uh I don't need it. I'm going to hold off, actually. Um, okay. So we'll start with the, the attack in um, Townton. So I've got six on zero, because uh, it was raided. Six on zero. So Massacre, uh, that's good for you. Um, but first, the, the five is enough with six to destroy it. So I'll flip that. And then while I'm moving the VPs, uh, with the Massacre, you get to place a, um, one of your troops on the board. In a friendly settlement. Okay, sure. Uh, I think actually, um, oh, that one's Massachusetts. I think you have to place a, a Massachusetts guy there. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that one's a little, a little strange. Okay. Um, all right, so let me just bump these up real quick. So up to two, and... Oh, I'm sorry, not those. That. Okay. All right, so next attack, uh, we'll do Phillips stack attacking Portsmouth. So that's seven on zero. Uh, two on three. Uh, so three with seven is enough to destroy. Oh, the ambush does that. So uh, it's odd. So um, you would get to uh, attack first. So we would do your damage first, and then I'd apply mine. Um, but it doesn't matter because uh, uh, with zero you don't do any anyway. So that flips. So Portsmouth is gone, um, and so that'll bump up the the veep and the provisions lost again. And um, then we just have our last attack in Edgar Town. I've got four, and then you've got three, uh, two plus one, and uh, uh, no effect doubles. So those just go. And those to there. Okay. Uh, so that's all of my, uh, that's everything for me. And so now it's the English movement. And you get up to three stacks. So if I destroy a port, um, uh, you can no longer use it for C movement. Uh, so, and then um, I can also, though I can still use it to receive muskets. Um, so I can get a musket on the board each turn if I'm in a port space or a river space. And place it with that stack. They, they function as neutral spaces. So you won't be able to raise troops there anymore, but you can move through them. Now, moving there, I do have the option to, to attempt to intercept. Uh, I won't, but because uh, it's a neutral space. Um, okay. Well, you can... Uh, uh, did you mean you wanted to go into Townton and then uh, right um, the one option that you could have because you can't you can't get the big stack in there without a leader um, is uh, you can still you know make two small attacks with with two two stacks of two units um, from the north and south. Uh, no, no, no. The the one to the right of it. So you could so you could put those two uh, where the raised village marker is, uh, and then you, you can still you can attack into uh, into my space because um, you're not actually in that space. Um, so I wasn't sure if you if you thought that stacking limits applied because of that or. Uh, oh, it's because I'm probably over it. Oh, you are right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think if it's neutral, I 
Okay. Well, uh, I don't think there's there's not really retreating in this game. So, uh, yeah. But it does mean I won't be able to take reinforcements there. Would you like to start? Yep. Okay. So four on one. Okay. So four. Uh, so you'd receive a spy, but you don't have a leader there. Uh, I do nothing to you, and I believe a three is one. Okay. So that'll be a put a rated settlement there. Uh, only if it's raised. Right. Okay. So, four on seven. Yeah. Uh, no. No, uh, nothing happens. Yeah. The low odds attacks for the colonials aren't too bad because your troops will come back and mine won't. So you you can take some hits early on and we'll do more damage to me later. And then in the south, I think it's a, a three on uh, five. Oh, that, oh. Um, if you do, you can do that. If you do that, um, that's a, a neutral space. Um, so you'd be attacking the, the neutrals, and they would come in forever. Um, so, so they typically have a, risk, a, a surrender value. Um, actually, well, I'm thinking of it. I've never seen the, that move done. Um, it may not be a bad move, um, because those guys have a really high surrender level, um, and I'm bringing them in anyway. Um... Sorry, just let me uh, look this up real quick. Right, right. So that tribe, that that whole uh, like blue tribe, will be the ones that are coming in uh, this next turn. So. Um, Yeah, um, yeah. is that? No, it's, it's in here somewhere. Um, I just looked up in the index. Uh, see, it's, it's my part about playing new, new players, you know, get, get new strategies. Some of which are strange and some of which work, and let's see which one this is. Um, <laughs> Alright, good to know. Uh, where's that? Mm -hmm. So, where did they? This, I have to admit, this is not one of the better organized or written rule books that I've experienced. I mean, it looks fine when you first read it, but then the the errata is kind of kind of ugly. Um, so so they'll join the side permanently. Um, so I think I think basically what would happen if you made that attack, 
I would automatic, before the attack is made, and here's the downside, um, before the attack is made, I would put the, the troops associated with that for its start setup. So it would be four troops in a sachem, um, and Kenochet, so my other um, uh, key leader, uh, on the board. And then you would make the attack. And then um, they would be in permanent. Uh, so the only downside being that um, um, I'd be able to put troops in the space that you're attacking before you attack it. And now, you can move through the space. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. Um, well, I think we uh, bump up the, the turn track and stuff now. So, uh, so we're on to turn three. So you'll get church this turn. Um, okay. Uh, so... You can place church, I mean, I think it's in any Rhode Island or Plymouth space, but let me double check. Mm. Okay, yeah, so church goes on to any settlement space in Plymouth or Rhode Island, um, and that'll be the first thing that happens on this turn. So he's on the, the turn... Uh, the turn track to on the far left of the board. Uh, you want to drag him over? Yep. Right. So, um, it seems like your options, uh, well, just the, the place that you could have put him in the first place um, are either Wickford, Pro uh, Providence, uh, or Swansea. Because uh, Townsend is no longer a settlement, and you've got leaders in the other two spaces with troops uh, in Plymouth. Um, you could put them in one of the, the empty spaces, but that's probably not uh, a good idea. Um, so it would be hard for me. I don't know if it's even is it possible. So if you were to put them for, in Wickford, for example, uh, you've got four steps um, of damage that you can take, and the most that I can do with... Uh, uh, four troops is two. So he'll be safe for a turn in Wickford. Um, uh, he would probably be safe in Swansea. He would definitely be safe in Swansea if um, you put a uh, your reinforcement troop there. Um, and he'd also be okay in Providence. Um, so, so probably the two places where he's going to do the most value for you uh, either Wickford or um, Swanesa. What is that? I don't know. I don't want to see. No, no. Um, yeah. So, so they don't. I mean, I'll get VP. It's bad if he goes away, but you're not reduced back to the, the up to three companies and stuff. Um, um, oh, right. Yeah. So, so by putting him there. Uh, as I'm thinking about it slightly more, because the purple, the the nonsense uh, will be coming in. Um, uh, I think it's still still a, a fine move, uh, but I will be able to attack there with two stacks, um, and so you'll definitely want to place your reinforcement there. Um, but other than that, that's fine. And then starting with this turn, uh, you get to make uh, an allied Indian die roll, which means that you. Uh, uh, you roll to see if you get some allies, uh, and I think it's uh, a one or less, um, and the uh, modifiers being uh, you subtract one for every two uh, settlements of or every two villages of mine that you've raised. So um, you've only raised one, so uh, natural one, and you get to place an allied Indian. Nope. So um, okay. Uh, and so now English reinforcements, and it's still um, two Massachusetts and one of everybody else.
just something to point out with the guys that you're placing up north. Uh, the Those blue guys are the last ones to come in in the game. Um, so they won't be there for a while. So uh, the, the, like, the pink, the pink come in before them and you've got a whole bunch of settlements over there. Um, so that's something to consider. Uh, So first, now I do um, Indian Diplomacy, so I'll take Philip, and I have the option to, and I will, take uh, one of the troops that he's under and put him uh, with the uh, Narragansetts. Um, where do I want them? So I think, I think Philip is going to end up over here. And then I place four of those plus their... Uh, Kenocha and the Sachem. Let me just stack those up. Four. Just drop it. Oh, it didn't stack it. There we go. Okay. So I just. Okay, so the Sachem. Hmm. So one has to go there. space, though, I think. Yep. Uh, so I'll do it this way. Uh, actually. Okay. And then, I don't know if I have any reinforcement. Yeah, I've got... Oh. Oh, yeah, no, that's not dead yet. So I can place my one green there. Uh, fortunately, he wasn't destroyed. And um, the village wasn't destroyed. And that's it for my reinforcements. So now I do my movement. Um, how are we going to... Yeah, we're just going to have to do it this way. So those two to there, um, no option to intercept because it's my space, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, before I forget, before I do all my movement, um, I do have two muskets to place, I know I can place at least one of them with Philip, because um, he's on a river space, so that'll go with the war band. Um, and then, uh, do I have another river space that I'm... Yeah, because of the... And these come on at the same time as the reinforcements. Uh, so, I can stick that with this guy. Okay. Um, so anyway, so I had moved uh, uh, one space with Kenocha's uh, stack, and then the second one will attack Warwick. Um, and... You've, uh, you have the option to intercept with that stack that has um, a church in it to the south, uh, if you'd like, uh, which would be a 436. Um, yeah. Um, I think you can, before you roll the die, determine uh, how many of them would go with him. Okay. Uh, 
okay, so that's my first. What I want to do with my second. I want to... Uh, yeah, I've got all those troops in, so it doesn't matter at this point whether... Question is: Do I go for a slugfest, or do I? Do I? Uh, I already, I already have three race settlements, so I, I may actually be just patient this turn. Um, not sure. So, um, yeah, let's do some interesting stuff. Uh, so I'll move this guy two, five to here. Six to there. Um, and uh, then, so that's two. <sighs> two, three, four, five. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, that, this makes sense. So that's two. Uh, to here is four, and then to attack is uh, I get stuck. five, six. Um, and you have you initially have the option to intercept, but it becomes a seven because of the two pip connection. Um, uh, though I think you have the option to I think evasion. Just I forget if evade is a battle phase or a movement phase. Um, let me just double check that real quick. I think it's a uh, I think it's battle, please. Yeah, okay. So, so you get to decide if you want to evade later. Um, and then, uh, uh, so that's three. Um, and then do I want to... I don't know. Nah, I don't want to do that this turn. Um, uh, right, okay, yeah. So you would need a, you need a leader there in order to, to get that... To, be feasible. So if you had like a key leader there, it'd become a five. But yeah, you're right. An eight is a seven. Um, oh yeah, why not? You know what? And then I'll move that big stack to. Oh right, but if I move there, the problem is that you have the option to intercept, and then that's okay because you don't have a lot of troops with Winslow. I think right. Yeah, just the one. So I'll move here. You can attempt to intercept if you'd like. Uh, with Winslow, I take it, or do you want to do it with the the uh, Massachusetts troops? Okay, so uh, four through six, um, got it. So uh, in this case, you move into the space where I was, and I move back. Uh, oh, well, one. I okay. Yeah, no, we're fine. Um, oh, did I screw up? Hang on. Wait. So I think I think what happens I move back to the space right before that. Um, right. Um, uh, the intercepted player. Okay. Um, where I did screw up, I think. I forget, I forget if this is me or the way the stacking rules work in the game. Let me see if it was me. Um, okay, so so it looks like I, I screwed up. I couldn't, because I had to move through the, the rated space, um, but I could only take two guys into there, because there's already a guy in there. So, if you don't, I'm just going to leave... I would have to leave one back because the stacking limits were violated. Um, but the rest of these guys now move back to here. Oh, oops. Oh, what was that? No. So. I can get those. I don't know, just do one by one. Okay, so these three are going to here. And then you're in the raided village space with Winslow. And there's a battle marker place 
here. Um, and the um, that one doesn't count against the my five limit. Um, for yeah, according to the rules, but um, I mean it doesn't make a difference in this context, and also that doesn't make sense to me because I would I would still have to to. Oh no! You know what? It only matters. It only matters during the winter. Um, uh, if if that comes up, I'll explain it. Because um, I can only still move five stacks, so I could only place five battle markers anyway. Um, uh, and I think that's everybody that I I want to to move now. Um, right. Okay. So we'll so we'll get to battles now. Um, we'll start with uh, let's start with the uh, the interception attack. So, uh, in that stack, I've got uh, three full strength. Um, I have two muskets there. I shouldn't have two muskets there. I don't know how that happened. Move that one back to the board. But I've got uh, three full strength, and I've got... Um, oh, oh, I know how that um, so I've got three full strength, uh, is six, and then seven for the musket, and then you've got uh, a full strength, and Winslow is three. So seven on three. Mm. Okay. So with the... Uh, uh, so Massacre, Odd, affects me. Um... So with you do th uh, a three strength point rolling three is going to do one to me, um, and this will this will hurt. I do a six to you. Or, I'm sorry, I do three to you. I rolled a six, so I do three. Um, so I have to flip one of my guys, and uh, Winslow is in trouble because um, the the unit goes um, for you. Um, so that moves me up a VP, and then. Um, I think it's like a die roll to determine if he if he dies or lives, because um, uh, there's nobody left with Winslow. Um, right. Okay. So you're so uh, if you want to roll one die to see what happens to him on a four through six, he survives. He's wounded, and he'll get placed on the turn track a one through three, and he's eliminated permanently. Okay. Uh, you got a two, so he's gone permanently. So if you just want to put him, yeah. Um, and so that's worth uh, another two victory points to me. So that... Oh, sorry, so up to six. Okay. Uh, and I won't advance. So that one goes. Um, okay, where do you want to... And then I'll attack with Philip Stack. So Philip Stack has... And I'll just put him on top of the needle easier. Um, Philip Stack has... Uh, Four points worth of troops, uh, uh, six for the musket, I was sorry, five for the musket, six for Philip, attacking uh, three. Um, and uh, you don't have a leader, so you're unable to evade, so it's just six on three. Uh, panic. Um, so you'll be able to, it's odd, so it affects me, so you'll be able to choose one of my two troops. They're equivalent. Um, the, the, just to be clear, the, um, the musket in this game uh, is associated with the whole stack. So um, just knocking out um, uh, one unit wouldn't necessarily get rid of the musket bonus. Um, so you just basically knock me down two strength points. So I go from six to four. Um, and with four, rolling a four, I do one to you. And with three doing a three, you do one to me, so we trade. So, one strength point. And, actually, it'll be that guy. Flip. Okay. Um, so that one goes... Oh, I probably should have done this one be uh, before, because of the massacre possibility. But, um... Oh, right, hang on, hang on. Was the... There was two battles ago. Um, was that a massacre? Yeah, it was an odd massacre, so I should be able to place a troop on the board. Forgot about that. So, uh, and I'll place that with Kenochet. Why not? Because he can go any settlement, any village. So now that stacks a seven, attacking a, a one. Uh, all right, good. So you'll get a massacre, so that's helpful. 
Um, so three, uh, rolling a three with a one does nothing. Rolling a one with seven just does one. So I'll place a rated settlement marker there. And you get to place uh, one company uh, somewhere on the map, on a settlement on the map. And um, uh, and then we've got the Edgar Edgar Town attack. So I've got six, and you've got three. Um, that's not too bad for you. And I am ambushed. Ouch! That's not good. So we'll uh, because I'm ambushed, we'll resolve your. Uh, I don't. <laughs> there's a strange result in this game because um, odd effects um, Indians and even effects English. So the distribution ends up in the and the. Um, uh, uh, you know, the doubles are always even, and they always result in um, uh, no battle. So it'll be more common for the Indian player to get ambushed than it will be for the English player to get ambushed, but whatever. Um, uh, just a strange quirk. So I'm going to have to take two points of damage before uh, I attack, so I'll flip two of my units. Puts me down to a four. Doing a four with, what did I roll? A three. Four with three is one, so you take one point of damage. Just clean up my stack a little bit. Okay. And it's your turn. Not at all. <laughs> 